Hey, what is up YouTube and in today's jailbreak update video we have a lot to talk about. During this past week there have been quite a few changes made to iOS and we have even received a demo of a zero day jailbreak for iOS 11 and iOS 10.3.2. So the most important and very first update that occurred this past week happened on June 23rd at the Mobile Security Conference commonly known as MOSEC. This conference is hosted by the Pangu Jailbreak team and started in 2015. Since then this conference has been held annually and focuses on new developments within mobile security. Before the conference wrapped up the very last team to present was KeenLab, yet another security research team and they demoed an iOS 11 and iOS 10.3.2 zero day jailbreak. Now zero day meaning that Apple has yet to patch these vulnerabilities and exploits that the team used to make this jailbreak happen. News from this conference was first posted on Vangelis' Twitter account and it was actually posted during the conference right before the demo happened. As you can see, the tweet isn't in perfect English, but it says one more talk of Mosaic 2017 is left now. The last talk will show a demo of zero day for the jailbreak in iOS 11. What it's referring to is that Keen Lab is going to demo a jailbreak that contains zero day exploits. Shortly later, we receive another tweet from the same account that shows an image of the demo going on. It says, Ling Chen is demonstrating an iOS 11 beta 2 jailbreak on iPhone 7. Now, it's important to note that Ling Chen is a part of the Keen Lab team, and it's interesting that we can see that the jailbreak is first being demoed on iOS 11 beta 2 and on the iPhone 7, being not only the latest iOS to date, but the latest iPhone to date. Our very last tweet in relation to this conference is provided by Min Zing, where he shows off the entire jailbreak process in three images. Now, I've talked about Min Zing in the past. He is a security engineer who works very closely with the Pangu team. But for those of you who don't know, Vangelis is also a very trustworthy source of information because he is the one who personally organizes the Mosaic conference. While we don't have a complete story of exactly what happened or what the jailbreak looks like, from the images that were leaked on Min Zing and other users' Twitter accounts, we can speculate that the conference went something like this. The demo started off by showing three different iPhones, the leftmost being an iPhone 6S Plus running iOS 10.3.2, the middle being an iPhone 7 running iOS 11, and the right being an iPhone 7 running iOS 10.3.2. From this image, it looks like the audience was then taken through the process of installing a side-loaded app, much like the Yalu and Pango apps we have seen previously, in order to successfully jailbreak. Then finally, as an end result, we can see Cydia running on all three devices on iOS 11 and iOS 10.3.2 respectively. So that is great that we received a demo, but what is on most people's mind is will we ever receive a public release of this jailbreak? And the answer is pretty unambiguous at the moment. Now we can't get our hopes too high yet because this demonstration does not necessarily mean that the jailbreak will be released to the public anytime soon. Many of us are far too common with Pangu's iOS 10.3.1 demo back in March that has yet to be released to the public. That being said, this demonstration does however prove it is possible to jailbreak iOS 11 and 10.3.2 even with their numerous security updates. From now on, this is all just speculation on what could happen, but again we are left with three possible outcomes for this jailbreak. One is the jailbreak is never released to the public and in fact was intended only for demonstration purposes. Secondly, KeenLab, whether it be in a joint release with Pangu or not, could release the jailbreak for iOS 10.3.3 once that is seeded to the public. And of course, lastly, this jailbreak could surface later this fall once iOS 11 is released to the public. But I have to reiterate, as I've said in past videos, timing is an important factor to consider when releasing a jailbreak. It is all about releasing the jailbreak when the timing is right in order to have the most amount of people who want to jailbreak be allotted the opportunity to jailbreak and remain on that jailbreak for the longest amount of time. Now the theory that we will see in iOS 10.3.3 jailbreak is gaining credibility considering the amount of beta releases it has received. In other words, iOS 10.3.3 should be extremely stable for a jailbreak to run on. This as we know is one of the leading reasons why Pangu launched its iOS 9.3.3 jailbreak for that specific firmware last year. Along the same lines, 10.3.3 will include all of iOS 10's features, unlike 10.2 which is the last version of iOS 10 that is jailbreakable. And just to reiterate, it would also be much more stable than the current iOS 10.2 jailbreak and in all likelihood would be more stable than an early iOS 11 jailbreak. That being said, however, this theory contains one major hole and that is that this jailbreak that was demoed contains zero-day exploits that still currently exist on iOS 11. 
It'd be one thing if this demo was only presented on iOS 10, which would hint at the fact that the exploits used were patched in iOS 11, but that is not the case. Currently, Keen Labs Jailbreak works on iOS 11 Beta 2, and if Apple doesn't patch it in time, it will work on the final version of iOS 11 when it is released to the public later this fall. That is compared to if the jailbreak was released in the near future for iOS 10, Apple would indefinitely patch it for future versions of iOS 11. Considering this, it is unclear at the time if this jailbreak is intended for iOS 10.3.3 or to be held until iOS 11 is released later this fall. That being said, it is a rarity these days that we see a jailbreak for a brand new iOS firmware near the time of its original launch. I'm also skeptical if releasing a jailbreak shortly after iOS 11 launches would be a good idea considering the first few versions would most likely contain bugs and performance issues. As we've seen in the past, Apple typically rolls out a few updates when a new OS launches solely to fix those issues. Thus, if a jailbreak was released for iOS 11 early on, it could be very buggy and have just as many performance issues as our current iOS 10.2 jailbreak. It would make sense to release a jailbreak for iOS 10.3.3 considering it is expected to be very stable and maybe one of the last versions of iOS 10 that is created before Apple gears up for the launch of iOS 11 later this fall. Furthermore, this stability would allow many users who want to jailbreak stay on the jailbreak even well past when iOS 11 is released, just like many of us did with iOS 9 until iOS 10 jailbreak was released in January. In my opinion, it'd be more satisfying to receive a stable jailbreak that includes all of iOS 10 features than to have a very unstable jailbreak that only grants us some of iOS 11 features. Because undoubtedly, Apple will come along and introduce a new feature to iOS 11 that pushes many of us jailbreak users into a corner. We would then have to choose between that and all the potential of our jailbreak. But regardless of when this jailbreak is released, it seems we owe a big thanks not only to KeenLab, but also to Apple. In fact, Apple allowing users to install apps without a developer account seems to be a vital element keeping jailbreaking alive. As we saw before in the pictures, it looks like KeenLab's jailbreak uses a side-loaded app, one that would be installed via Cydia Impactor in order to pull off the jailbreak. In other words, it'd be very similar to the Pangu and Yellow apps we are already familiar with. That however means this jailbreak is only semi-untethered, meaning you will have to download and install this app in order to jailbreak, and then this jailbreak will only be signed for a certain amount of days. Because Apple's free developer program only allows us to sign certificates for 7 days, that means that's the window that we have to jailbreak. Of course, if you have a paid developer account, you can sign apps for up to 365 days, but most of us are limited to 7. This also means if your phone ever had to reboot for any reason, you would have to rerun the jailbreak process. As of now, the best policy is to stay on the lowest possible firmware you can in order to ensure you have the best chances of jailbreaking in the future. Again, just to reiterate, I would by no means suggest to upgrade now to a newer firmware, even though we did see a jailbreak demo, that doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be a public release of it. Also, in recent news, as of June 27th, Apple has stopped signing iOS 10.3.1, meaning if you are currently running a version of the iOS 11 beta, the lowest firmware you can restore to will be 10.3.2. But that may not be the end of the world considering a jailbreak was just demoed for it, proving it can be jailbroken. Also earlier this week, Apple released iOS 11 Beta 2 Update 1 on Monday the 26th. This addressed and fixed a downgrade issue which prohibited users to downgrade to 10.3.2. Interestingly enough, this update was only for a few specific iOS devices, but that did not include the iPhone 6s, iPhone 7, and iPad 10.5 inch. So if you're still having downgrade issues and your device is being forced into recovery mode when you're trying to restore to iOS 10.3.2, follow Apple's guide to first downgrade to 10.3.3 beta first, and then downgrade once more back to iOS 10.3.2 while it's still being signed. This way you can still stay on the lowest possible firmware, being 10.3.2 at the current point in time. But as far as jailbreaking goes, ideally I would not upgrade your device to a new software until a jailbreak is released for it in order to ensure you have the ability to jailbreak. Again, it is becoming more and more common for Apple to immediately patch a new jailbreak within a few days of it being released, meaning you will have a limited amount of time to update to a new version of iOS that supports a jailbreak once it is released. This just means for the jailbreaking community, we have to stay on top of when a new jailbreak may be coming out and thus is one of the reasons why we do this series. As of now, our best hope for a new iOS 10 jailbreak that is not in beta stage is for Pangu or KeenLab to release a stable jailbreak for iOS 10.3.3 once it is seeded to the public. Well, for this video, that pretty much wraps up everything we have to talk about in the recent events that happened this week involving iOS 11 and jailbreaking. But before I go, I just want to say thank you for all the support of the channel. Don't forget to leave a comment below letting me know what you think of these recent developments within the jailbreaking community. And what would you like to see the most, an iOS 10.3.3 jailbreak or save it for iOS 11?
Anyway, guys, I'm just really excited to see what new developments are to come this summer, including new iOS 11 betas, hopefully a new jailbreak. But for now, I hope you guys feel a little bit more updated on the jailbreaking situation. And until next time, this is Tony, signing out.